ASMR history video here on the channel. Yes, finally we are back with another history video. It has been, it has been some time. It really has been. It's been far too long, but as you know, I've got all my kit back and we're really going to get back into a good routine of doing these history videos, conspiracy theory videos, and I've got a few more ideas in the works that will be coming to the the channel soon, so watch this, watch this space. Now today's topic is the Cold War. Now I've picked this because in the previous couple of um, history videos we've done, it's it's cropped up, and it's certainly a uh, it's certainly an interesting uh, part of history, going on for quite a long time. So I've gone through, as always, done my thorough thorough research. <laughs> And we're going to go through the Cold War. Now, if you could leave a like. I don't usually beg for likes, but I'm begging now because obviously these videos take slightly longer, well, a lot longer uh, to prepare as I do do a fair bit of research. I have a vague to moderate knowledge of the topics already, but I still have to go and find all the facts and the dates and stuff. So, and obviously they take a little longer to edit, so just go ahead and leave a like now. The video might be terrible, but just, just like it anyway, please. <laughs> but anyways, I think let's just get into some history ASMR style. Let's go. So firstly, what was the Cold War? Well, to give a little summary, a little introduction to it, the, the Cold War was basically a period of geopolitical tension between the Soviet Union and the United States, the United States, and their respective allies. So we have the Eastern Bloc against the Western Bloc, and this sort of geopolitical tension uh, happened after World War II. There's dispute over the real start of this sort of ideological battle, but generally it's agreed it started in the late 1940s and ended in 1991 with the dissolution of the Soviet Union. If you hadn't already guessed, my, my nose are down here by the way, so hence the, hence the movement. The Cold War is called such because the gold signifies the lack of direct military combat between the two sides, but they each supported what is called proxy wars. Proxy wars. And a proxy war is basically where a war is fought between uh, sides who are acting on the orders and instigation of countries or groups not directly involved in the conflict. For example, the Vietnam War. But we'll get on to that. Uh, so that sort of summarised what the concept of a Cold War is. Let's get into the chronology of what actually happened and the events that unfolded as part of this Cold War between the US and the Soviet Union. So we firstly begin in February 4th to the 11th, 1945 at the Yalta Conference. This was a meeting between Churchill, Roosevelt and Stalin to decide what would happen at the end of the war. Topics discussed included the partitioning of Germany, the fate of Poland, the United Nations and German reparations, how much they'd have to pay for the war. Skipping forward to May 8th, 1945, we have VE Day, victory in Europe as Germany surrenders to the Russian army. On the July 17th to the 2nd of August, 1945, we have the Potsdam Conference. The Potsdam Conference formally divided Germany and Austria into four zones. It was also agreed that the German capital, Berlin, would be divided into four zones. The Russian-Polish border was determined and Korea was to be divided into Soviet and American zones. Now, still, I'm going on with World War II. On August the 6th and the 8th, 1945 respectively, the US drops its first and second atomic bombs, the first of which was on Hiroshima, and the second was on Nagasaki. Nagasaki. And then, about a week or so later, on the 14th of August, 1945, we have BJ 
Day, which is where the Japanese surrendered, bringing World War II to an absolute end. Now, around this time, on the 2nd of September 1945, Vietnamese independence was established with Ho Chi Minh proclaiming Vietnam an independent republic. And this, this is sort of the, the early stages of the Vietnam War conflict. See previous video. On the 12th of March 1947, we have the Truman Doctrine. And this was where President Truman promised to help any country that was facing a communist takeover. So it basically outlined the US's position that it would hold communism at any cost. A few months later, in the 5th of June 1947, we have the Marshall Plan. This was a program of economic aid offered by the United States to any European country. The plan was rejected outright by Stalin and any Eastern Bloc country considering accepting aid was reprimanded severely. Consequently, the aid was only given to Western European countries. So this sort of kicks off the little bit of tension between the US and the Soviet Union. In June 1948, we have the formation of West Germany. The French, USA and UK partitions of Germany were merged to form West Germany. On the 24th of this month, 1948, we have the Berlin blockade. Russia's response to this merger of the French, USA and UK partitions of Berlin was to cut all road and rail links to that sector. This meant that those living in Western Berlin had no access to food and supplies and faced starvation. Food was brought to Western Berliners by US and UK airplanes, an exercise known as the Berlin Airlift. And this blockade, uh, this blockade, sorry, was ended in May 1949. So just under a year later. So that is a that is a long time to be, you know, faced with food shortages. On the fourth of April 1949. NATO was formed. NATO stands for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and it formed with member states Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, the United Kingdom and of course the United States. June 25th, 1950, the Korean War begins when North Korea invades South Korea. So we're now going to talk a little bit about the Korean War. It could honestly be a video in itself, but we'll just talk about it here. So the Korean War was a conflict between the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, which is North Korea, and the Republic of Korea, which was, of course, South Korea, in which at least 2.5 million persons lost their lives. The war reached international proportions in June 1950 when North Korea, supplied and advised by the Soviet Union, invaded the South. So, here we see another example of a proxy war. The Soviet Union using North Korea to invade the South, which was allied, of course, with the US. The United Nations, with the United States as the principal particip participant, joined the war on the side of the South Koreans, and the People's Republic of China came to North Korea's aid, so we already have this sort of gang of communists. We have China, we have North Korea, and we have the Soviet Union. After more than a million combat casualties had been suffered on both sides, the fighting ended in July 1953, with Korea still divided into two hostile states. Negotiations in 1954 produced no further agreement, and the front line has been accepted ever since as the de facto. 
no boundary between North and South Korea. So that sort of summarizes basically in terms of the Cold War sort of context, I guess, to bring back that A level slash GCSE praise. Um, the Soviet Union used North Korea to forward its communist mission. So now the March 5th, 1953, Stalin dies at the age of 74 and he is succeeded by Nikita Khrushchev. Or Khrushchev. In the summer 1954, we have the Geneva Accords. This set of documents ended the French war with the Viet Minh and divided Vietnam into North and South states. The communist leader of North Vietnam was Ho Chi Minh, while the US friendly South was led by Ngo Dinh Diem. Again, see previous video, but this is obviously the early stages of the Vietnam War, another Cold War proxy war. And the May 14th 1955, we have the Warsaw Pact. The Warsaw Pact was formed with member states East Germany, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Hungary, Romania, Albania, Bulgaria and the Soviet Union. So this Warsaw Pact was created in reaction to the integration of West Germany into NATO in 1955. But uh, it's also considered to have been motivated by Soviet desires to maintain control over military forces in Central and Eastern Europe. The Soviet Union and seven of its European satellites sign a treaty establishing the Warsaw Pact, a mutual defense organization that put the Soviets in command of the armed forces of the member states. October 23rd, 1956 is the Hungarian Revolution. This began as a Hungarian protest against communist rule in Budapest. It quickly gathered momentum and on 24th of October, Soviet tanks entered Budapest. The tanks withdrew on the 28th and a new government was formed which quickly moved to introduce democracy, freedom of speech and freedom of religion. In response to this, the Soviet tanks returned on the 4th of November, encircling Budapest. The Prime Minister Imre Nagy made a world broadcast that Hungary was under attack from the Soviet Union and called for help. Hungary fell to Russia on the 10th of November 1956. On the November 1st, 1957, we have the space race. So I'm going to temporarily skip around the years and explore all events to do the space race and then we'll, we'll then come back to the to the chronology of the Cold War but it's important to sort of talk about the space race in its in its own right. So the space race. So the space race was a series of competitive technology demonstrations between the US and the Soviet Union which obviously aimed to show which side was superior in space flight. Now, in, in November, on November 1st, 1957, USSR Sputnik 2 carried Laika the dog, the first living creature to go into space. On the 12th of April, 1961, Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human being in space, so it's 2-0 to Russia. But then, all of a sudden, on December 21st, 1968, the US launches Apollo 8, the first manned orbit of the moon. And on the 20th of July, 1969, US Apollo 11 lands on the moon and Neil Armstrong becomes the first man to step foot on the moon. Is this coincidental? Is this... If you think this is strange that the Russians seem to be ahead and then all of a sudden the US won the space race, check out my conspiracy theory video. <laughs> In all seriousness, we did a conspiracy theory video on the 1969 moon landing. Check it out if you haven't. It's pretty interesting stuff. Now, 
let's go back to 1961, so that sort of summarises the space race, it's just another, another element to this Cold War, to this lover's tiff between the US and the Soviet Union, so... In the ap on April 17th, 1961, we have the Bay of Pigs invasion, a force of Cuban exiles trained by the CIA, aided by the US government, attempted to invade Cuba and overthrow the communist government of Fidel Castro. The attempt failed. <laughs> August 13th, 1961, the Berlin Wall is built and borders sealed between East and West Germany. On October 14th, 1962, is the Cuban Missile Crisis. A US spy plane reported citing the construction of a Soviet nuclear missile base in Cuba. President Kennedy sets up a naval blockade and demands the removal of the missiles. War was averted when the Russians agreed on 28th of October to remove the weapons. The US, as a result, agreed not to invade Cuba. On the 22nd of November 1963, J.F. Kennedy was assassinated while on a visit to Dallas. Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested for the murder, but there has always been speculation that he was not a lone killer and that there may have been a communist or CIA complicity. Again, this links to another previous video that I made. The Our Other Conspiracy Theory video was on the assassination of JFK, so if you want, check that out as well. It's almost like we're an anti russian channel. We're not, I promise. It's just that all this history and conspiracy theories are properly juicy, so... <laughs> but it's weird how all the videos I've done sort of link together could make a movie out of them. On October 15th, 1964, USSR's Nikita Khrushchev is removed from office and is replaced by Leonid Brezhnev. In July 1965, going back to the Vietnam War, 150,000 US troops are sent to Vietnam, and this is kind of going on in the background all this time. The US and Russia are fighting these proxy wars in the form of North versus South Vietnam. On August 20th, 1968, is the Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. The Warsaw Pact forces entered Czechoslovakia in a bid to stop the reforms known as the Prague Spring, which was instigated by Alexander Dubček. When he refused to halt his program of reforms, Dubček was arrested. Skipping forward five or so years now, on August 15, 1973, the Paris Peace Accords ends American involvement in Vietnam. And on April 30th, 1975, a couple of years later, North Vietnam invades South Vietnam. Capture of Saigon by the North Vietnamese led to the whole country becoming communist. Now, obviously, I've done a full dedicated video on the Vietnam War because it's something I've studied for a while and it's super interesting. But basically, this victory for the North, for the communist North, marked an embarrassing defeat for the US, who poured millions and millions of dollars of resources, troops, and advisors into backing the South and they still lost, they were fighting a war they couldn't win, but they just, you know, they sent more and more troops and equipment, and that couldn't help them, and they still ended up losing, so it was a massively humiliating defeat for the US. In July 1975, we have the Apollo Soyuz test project. This was a joint space venture between the USA and the USSR, and it was heralded as an end to the space race, so these two enemies are, they're trying to be friends now, which is, you know, you love to see it. December 24th, 1979, Soviet troops invaded Afghanistan. The Soviet-Afghanistan war was fought between Afghanistan rebels called the Mujahideen and the Soviet-supported Afghanistan government. The United States supported the 
the Afghanistan rebels in order to try and overthrow the communist government to prevent the spread of communism. As a result of this, in July 1980, a number of countries, including the USA, boycotted the Summer Olympics held in Moscow in protest at the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Other countries included Great Britain, who participated under the Olympic flag rather than their national flag. In July 1984, in response, there is an Olympic boycott by Russia. Russia and 13 allied countries boycotted the Summer Olympics held in Los Angeles in retaliation. So you're not coming to our Olympics, well we're not going to go to yours. Like, <laughs> what? These are all like huge historical events, but ultimately what it boils down to is, like, they're so petty because of ideological differences, like the level of pettiness, like international pettiness is like unbelievable, and that's why I think it's so entertaining and interesting. <laughs> On the 11th of March 1985, Mikhail Gorbachev becomes the leader of the Soviet Union. Now, when Gorbachev becomes leader, uh, he wants an end to the war, he wants the end of the war in Afghanistan. He first tried to increase Soviet troops to end the war quickly. However, this didn't work, and by 1988, Gorbachev realised the war was costing Soviet troops and hurting their economy. He signed a peace treaty to end the war, and the last Soviet troops departed Afghanistan on February 15th, 1989. Now, this war had been an embarrassment for the Soviet Union. Their army no longer seemed invincible to the rest of the world, and this was like such a big thing. Like, Russia's whole deal is that they're this mighty fighting force who are undefeatable, and they're super tough, super scary. But this war in Afghanistan had shown them to be the complete opposite. So, just like the US had been humiliated in Vietnam, uh, the USSR had been humiliated in Afghanistan. Now, for the rest of 1989, we have a couple of events. Firstly, on October 23rd, Hungary proclaims itself a republic. On November 9th, we have the fall of the Berlin Wall, as the Berlin Wall was torn down. And on November 17th to December 29th, we have the Velvet Revolution, which is also known as the Gentle Revolution. And this was a series of peaceful protests in Czechoslovakia that led to the overthrow of the communist government. So, three, three incidents, three events there that signify the, the reduction of communist rule. On December 2nd and 3rd, 1989, we have the Malta Summit. This meeting between Gorbachev and George Bush reversed much of the provisions of the Yalta Conference in 1945, from where this all began. It is seen by some as the beginning of the end of the Cold War. On the 1st of July 1991, we have the end of the Warsaw Pact. The Warsaw Pact, which allied communist countries, was ended. On the 31st of July 1991, we have start. START stands for the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, and this was signed between Russia and the USA. So this marked a, a big turning point, a big moment in the relations between Russia and the USA. On the 25th of December 1991, Merry Christmas, Gorbachev resigns, and the hammer and sickle flag on the Kremlin is lowered. On the 26th of December 1991, the next day, Russia formally recognises the end of the Soviet Union. That's it. It is done. And that really is what marked the end of, of the Cold War. What started as a tense competition between two of the world's superpowers, in which either could have launched uh, nuclear weapons, uh, on the other, at any time, it beat it out after the Soviet Union was humiliated in Afghanistan and shown to be this not so invincible fighting force and not so not so uh, strong country. And uh, so this all ended in 1991, the end of the, the Cold War.
war and obviously the US won without their embarrassments as well uh, the defeat in Vietnam um, after millions were spent was the ultimate embarrassing some would argue more embarrassing than Afghanistan but but yeah I hope you did enjoy that I hope I realize it's a lot of dates but then again it's history like what else is it gonna be it's um, it's just so interesting like I said these are two countries but it could be a soap opera like the relationships and how dramatic they both are and the pettiness and everything it's just so interesting but let me know uh, what you think down below next history video I'm thinking non-war event so comment down below right now what non-war related historical event you'd like to see covered maybe something inspirational maybe a sporting event but I don't know how that would work as like a longer video but yeah let me know down below what non-war related historical event you'd like to see but anyways I really hope you did enjoy this video really great to, to get back into the history videos they will be coming more frequently I'm gonna aim for like one every three or four weeks I think that's like a that's a good number alternating with the conspiracy theory videos and the other ones I have in the works but that does conclude it for tonight's video so I really hope you did enjoy leave a like if you did leave a comment down below subscribe if you're new of course and until the next video everybody take care